The following 11-minute video contains extensive detailed dialogues, basic engineering, mathematics, and personal opinions that others may not agree. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi everyone, I'm Paul Parmelo. Thank you for joining me on another one of my videos. This is my 2014 Victory Cross Country Tour, and this is the jack that I've been using for years to work on it. On my last video, I explained to you the weaknesses of this jack and how I want to buy a better one. Unfortunately, the jack that I want is only available in the States and cannot be purchased here in Canada. And I can't go across the border to pick up the jack because we are in the COVID-19 pandemic and therefore the borders are closed. So I'm going to modify this jack to make it work better for me. Let's take a closer look at it and I'll explain what I'm going to do. The first thing I did was extend the arms on the saddle. You can see under here the original arms. They had these rods welded onto the back and the front of each arm. Uh, they got in my way, I just cut them off. And I got some steel and I bolted it down onto the original arms and then I took some black a rubber floor runner and I used some contact cement and I just glued them on top. The original arms were only 12 inches in length. Uh, a little too short for me for my bike. Uh, I measured it underneath and I needed something about 16 inches long. I happen to have a three foot piece of metal. I cut it into two 16 inch pieces and I bolted them down. So now my bike fits perfectly right on this. Um, now, some of you are going to say, well, Paul, you've got no support under here. Uh, this is gonna bend, your bike is gonna fall. Uh, no, this is hot rolled steel, the most common steel you can get and you buy them at every box store. It has a tensile strength of 67,000 PSI and a yield strength of 45,000 PSI. This steel is one quarter inch thick by two and a half inches wide. And if I wanted to bend this right here, if I wanted to put it into a, a hydraulic press or whatever and bend that, I would need to put 13 tons of pressure in order to bend this. My bike is sitting here. 90% of the weight is on the original arm. And with 13 tons needed to bend this, my bike is perfectly safe with this. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the actual bottle jack itself. This is the engine, the workhorse for this entire jack. This is a 1500 pound hydraulic bottle jack and it is connected to this bracket right here that is connected to this point here on the lever. This is actually my second bottle jack. The first one uh, blew the seals and would no longer lift uh, the bike. Let me tell you why. These types of jacks work on leverage. This is the lever. It has three points. The stationary pivoting point down here called the fulcrum. The energy point right here, that's where the hydraulic bottle is connected to. And the resistance point right here. This is where the weight of the motorcycle is going to be sitting. All levers have what's called an ideal mechanical advantage, an IMA. You calculate it by measuring the distance from the fulcrum to the energy point and from the fulcrum to the resistance point. This particular one is five and a half inches to the energy point and 13 and a half inches to the resistance point. We divide those two and we end up with 2.47. That is the IMA for this lever. I'm gonna round it up to 2.5 just to make the calculations easier for us. So that means that this energy point has to be 2.5 times greater than the resistance that I'm gonna put on here. For every pound I put on here, this bottle has to lift two and a half times that weight. This is a bottle rated at, rated at 1,500 pounds. It can lift more, but it's rated at 1,500. It'll work safely all day long at that. Since this is two and a half times more, therefore I can only put 600 pounds maximum on the jack. I weigh 250 pounds. 
That means this is two and a half times that, 625 pounds that this bottle has to lift. Can easily do it, it is a 1500 pound jack. So watch what happens when I stand on this. I'm going to use this pole to press the release pedal. Watch what happens. Easily lowers me down, nice and smooth. And it does that because it can easily handle my weight. Now, let's try lifting a motorcycle. This is a 900 pound motorcycle. That means this bottle has to lift 2,250 pounds. It's doing it, but it's well over its rated capacity. Now watch what happens when I lower this bike. It shakes violently. And that's because the seals, the valves inside that bottle are stretched beyond its rated capacity. The only way for me to lower it is to just ever so slightly hit the release pedal just to open it up a crack so it goes down ever so gently. It's the only way. What I need to do is beef up that bottle. 2,250 pounds it has to lift. That means a one ton jack will still not do it. I need at least two tons. This is an old four ton bottle that I had lying around for many years and it's gonna be perfect to uh, operate my jack. This is the original bottle that came with it. This is the one that the seals are all blown inside and it no longer works. So I'm going to modify this jack by taking pieces off of the original and moving them over here. The release uh, pedal um, I can't use because it's totally different uh, than this one. Um, but the foot pump, I'm going to take this whole entire mechanism and move it over here so I can use my foot pump. Now as for how it connects to the jack itself, um, it, it uses this half inch bar that fits into a receptacle underneath the bracket. Um, I could take this off and move it over here and weld it on top, but I really don't think I want to do that. As for the return spring, we no longer require it. The weight of the arms on the jack will be more than enough to bring the ram down back inside the bottle. Now, I have a piece of pipe here that um, will fit over and I could make an adapter of some sort, uh, cut an inch off of it, weld this on top and just use it as an adapter of some sort. Uh, but the jack that I wanted to get that's only available in the States, they use something similar uh, as this. They'll cut an inch or so off the pipe and they will weld it underneath the bracket of the jack and fit it into the ram and it just uses it uh, loose to hold it in place. So I'm thinking that's probably how I'm going to do it. So right now I'm going to uh, take all the pieces off there and move it over to my four ton jack. First, I have to remove the hardware from the four-ton jack. I have to enlarge the holes for the new pins to fit, and also drill some mounting holes. I have to remove the spring mechanism from the original bottle jack, and install it onto the four-ton jack. I'm grinding off the old attachment on the bracket, and cutting off a one-inch length of pipe and welding it onto the bracket. I then have to install the bottle onto the jack and fit the bracket onto the ram. So there you have it. Now, I was lucky. I happen to have a four-ton bottle jack and some steel lying around, so this cost me nothing. But even if I had to go out and buy all of this, it still would have been cheaper than buying the replacement bottle jack that they provide for this thing. And I've already had to do that once. So let's try this bad boy out. First thing to do, lower 
the safeties. Never rely on the hydraulics alone for the safety of your bike. We shouldn't even have to touch the bike. It's already lifting 2,250 pounds, but this is an 8,000 pound bottle. So I'm only using 25% of the capacity. Now, I'm gonna to have to figure out a better way to lower it, but if you remember, the jack that I wanted to purchase in the States um, uses this same feature to lower the bike. So for now, it's gonna be okay. If you remember how the bike lowered before, shaking all the way down, let's see how this one works. Again, I'm not even gonna to touch the bike. First thing to do, raise your safety. And that's it. A lot better, a lot smoother, a lot safer. And as I say in all my videos, there's many ways of doing things. This is how I did it, and it works very well for me. Thank you for joining me on another one of my videos today. Ride safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time.